Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to revisit the weighted average cost of capital. One of the problems will be looking at breakpoints, and the other will deal with the application of one of the formulas from this part of the curriculum. Now, before we get started, just a quick note that in case you haven't done so, I would urge you to relook at the mind map that I've done on the weighted average cost of capital, where I've covered the concept of breakpoints in detail. Okay, with that, let's get started. So this first problem is about calculating the breakpoint for debt capital. You'll recall from the marginal cost of capital curve that if we plot the total capital raised on the x-axis and the marginal cost of capital on the y-axis, it's an upward sloping curve. Of course, it's not a smooth curve, but one that increases in steps. So a breakpoint is defined as that amount of total capital for which there is a jump in the marginal cost of capital. The marginal cost of capital will of course increase if either the cost of debt or equity increases. Now the question here is asking for the breakpoint for debt capital. There is a change in the cost of debt, which means there'll be a change in the weighted average cost of capital when more than $900,000 of debt is raised. We look at the target capital structure and there's 45% debt, which means that when there are 0.45 units of debt, there is one total dollar of total capital raised. So how much total capital corresponds to $900,000 of debt? We solve this by dividing 900,000 by 0.45 to get $2 million, which makes B the correct answer. Now notice that there was a whole bunch of extraneous information provided. So the actual cost of debt does not matter when you're computing the breakpoint. All that matters is the relative amount of debt given by the target capital structure and the total amount of money that's being raised. Right, so let's look at the next example. Now here, we're being asked to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. So we immediately recall the formula as the weight of debt times the rate or cost of debt times one minus the tax rate. Remember, the debt portion is affected by the tax rate plus the weight of common equity times the cost of common equity. So let's see what we're given. We're given a debt to equity ratio. This is the first point at which you could stumble in this problem because it's very tempting to use 0.6 as WD and 0.4 as WKE. That would be incorrect. What a DE ratio of 0.6 means that for every six parts of debt, there are 10 parts of equity, which means that the weight of debt is six parts of 16 total parts. And of course, the weight of equity is 10 parts of 16 total parts. So we're given the weights, we're given the cost of debt, we're given the tax rate. Now what remains is to compute the cost of equity. And of course, the kinds of information we're given, we immediately recognize it's an application of the dividend discount model. Now here's a second fumble point in this question, because what we're given is the dividend just paid, and we have to adjust it to the dividend for next period. And of course, we do that by multiplying it by one plus G. Once you handle these two fumble points, then it's just a question of plugging the numbers into the formula. And of course, we get the cost of debt as 1.95% and the cost of equity as 7.05%, which gives the total weighted average cost of capital of 9%, which makes C the correct answer. So the lesson learned from both these problems that we've looked at today is that you have to be able to pick out the correct information from all of the information provided. And then you have to think about whether these numbers have to be adjusted before using them in the formulas. Good luck and I will be back soon with more videos.